G'day guys, it's Jet Simmer here. Uh, so today I am doing a cold dark startup tutorial and taxi and takeoff uh, for the F18 Superbug. Uh, so we're going to break it down um, to the advanced features of the aircraft and do the whole um, startup checklist uh, from start to finish and go take off and then we will do another tutorial on the landing side of things so both videos should be back to back um, so hopefully they're not too long uh, at a time so there will be two tutorials for the cold dark startup tutorial uh, so this one it will be APU cold dark startup the next uh, one will be the ground uh, one which is only a real quick one uh, which I can do um, Pretty much straight away, so there'll be three videos coming out pretty much back to back. Um, the the landing um, and the two different types of startups for the F-18 Superbug Hornet. Uh, after that, we'll get into some navigation and then a few other uh, videos later on. So, without further ado, it is uh, 24 uh, dew point and 32 temperature degrees here at Catherine Raff Base Tindall, which is a scenery I have here. Uh, for you today. Uh, it is in uh, Catherine Northern Territory in Australia. Uh, we are currently sitting in one of the um, uh, hangar bays uh, for all the jets. Uh, obviously the others are empty so I'm guessing all the other jets are out for them and there's more over that side where the maintenance hangar is and uh, yeah this is technically uh, for visitors in the the real world but FSX places me here. Uh, I've tried getting placed over there. Um, I can't remember the number of parking bay over there. So, yeah. So, welcome to 75 Squadron's uh, F-18 hometown. So, this is the hometown for the uh, Hornets. So, we will be getting into it. So, let's uh, jump into the cockpit. So, yeah. Superbug. Welcome to the Superbug. So, we're going to start up through the checklist. Um, so, first off, we're going to check to make sure that all circuit breakers are in which they are there so make sure they're all in so there's three there um, and there's a few more here and they're all in there yes you can pull the circuit breakers out so sometimes it will pop out in uh, in flight so you need to make sure that you're looking after the aircraft um, so we can't really do anything here but if you could um, make sure in auto both uh, you can have those two off and uh, that is on, I believe, uh, UFC. You want to keep that there. Whoops, sorry about that. I don't have ESDOC yet. I'm planning on getting it. Uh, so you want to check your hot or cold mic. I'm just going to turn the volume to half. I'm going to keep down the um, the the uh, radar and the tack can just a little bit because I think I have it set for um, ILS approach. <clears throat> so engine and uh, so your engine crank left and right. Whoops, uh, is off. Your APU is off. Your trim uh, auto trim button, which is that little sort of thing, is out, and your trim is centered. Okay. Your override gain is um, norm and guard closed, and your gen tie is norm and guard closed. Your probe is in retract. Your LM and RM external tanks. Uh, are all normal, overrided, and your field dump is off. Your reset FCS, which is your flight control systems, is pushed out. Now, for the purpose of this, I'm going to just push these forward. These technically should be all off. So, your ident is on norm, your inhibitor is on normal into wing, and your external lights are both off, and your formation lights are off. Right, so they go off too. Ground power is off, so if you want to use the ground power, you use it there. Everything is on auto. Um, for the purpose of getting set up, we're going to do that because as soon as we close it, you can't see it. So position lights are on and your strobe on, your beacon. Okay, <coughs> moving up here. Your fire test is norm and your uh, BRK brake press is off. Your hook bypass is in its um, off position. Your landing lights are off, anti-skid on, 
flaps are down and your launch bar is retracted. Your Janison is on safe, landing gear down, canopy handle pushed forward and your um, canopy push button Janison pulled out. Your arm is on safe and nothing is turned on. Make sure all of these are pushed out. This is your Janison selection uh, for all your or, uh, armaments on your wings. Make sure they're all pushed out. Uh, your two DDIs left and right are off. Your volume are off. And all your instruments here are in the auto and off position. And your MCP is off. You can go ahead and turn on the brightness of your fuel gauges and stuff on the uh, little panel here. And we make sure that um, the attitude, sorry, I had a brain fart, is uh, pulled out, um, pulled to cage or pushed to cage. So make sure that's pulled out and everything's off. You want to make sure that is on uh, normal your IR call or you can have it off, it doesn't matter. Your spin is on um, uh, norm, I think, yes, norm and guard closed. So that's that. Alright, so you want to make sure your hook is up, your wing fold is on hold, <coughs> that should be on hold, it's defaulted to spread. You want to make sure your AV call emergency is on normal and all your battery and gen switches are off. Make sure there's no power to the jet. This is your air conditioner ECS, so you want to just have a fiddle with wherever you particularly want. It's hot out, so I'm going to have the air conditioner on cold-ish today. Making sure everything else is off. Your P2 uh, is on auto and your engine test is off. So the uh, P2 ice has a, a test that you need to do. And this is your bleed switch for your engines. Make sure that is on the off and the uh, auxiliary, um, the org pull or the uh, APU um, air bleed is pushed down. Uh, so your lights, you can have that set up to your heart's content, but they should all be off when you first start, and your light test is off as well. And you have your defog on low. Anti-ice uh, windshield for rain or whatever is on the off position. This is for if you're doing fueling for another aircraft, make sure that is all in the off position, guard closed and safe. This is your uh, sensors, your radar, and all that sort of stuff. You want everything off. Uh, this is for all your weapons and stuff like that. And you want the, um, uh, I think it's the ISF, I think it is. If you didn't have it, it will be off. So we'll have it off so I can show you the warning uh, so you can uh, figure that out. Because I, it took me a while to figure that out. Um, no one really explained it. And then, obviously, the for your um, volume in your mic but you can't do anything there and making sure that is on the off position I believe yep it's on the off position and canopy open which is our little flick switch right there alright so that is the basic setup apart from what I forgot to tell you make sure they're all off too. That's your jam and defense dispenser, radar and um, CMWS. So it helps you find missiles out there. So that's it. Uh, so that's basically your preliminary data for the aircraft. Um, so now we're going to go on and start the aircraft uh, to get pretty much going. So first off we'll uh, turn on our battery making sure that we have a few different warnings. So you have FCS, which is your flight controls, and your bats all, meaning that you don't have enough power in the aircraft. Click the master warning to make sure there's no other warnings, and the little fuel and RPM and all that sort of stuff should have started up on the little uh, digital display down here. If you're in a small uh, another jet, like the DCS jet, or in um, some of the older models, it will all be analog, like this sort of stuff here. but in the uh, F-18 Superbug E, it is digital, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, parking brake is set, we know that. Probably forgot that in the preliminary, but you can see that it's in park because it's down here. Just double checking. 
All right, so we're going to do our fire test. So we're going to start with B. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Lead air left. Lead air left. Lead air right. Lead air right. And now we'll do the A test. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Lead air left. Lead air left. Lead air right. Lead air right. All right. So once they're both done, it should take about a minute. Um, so it should be reset back to normal. Now we can go ahead and turn our battery uh, right generator onto normal <coughs> or on, and then we can crank up the APU. Wait for about 30 seconds before it goes green. There we go. I didn't have that turned on there. That's why it stopped. So make sure you turn your battery, your um, generator, all that, and then you should be able to start the APU. So the APU is now started, uh, otherwise it will turn off. Okay. So all your other warnings should start popping up, how much fuel and uh, your whatever you got. Now it's not going to register completely until the jet starts turning over. Uh, that you got full fuel, but we know we have full fuel because we set it up before we started the sim. Alright. So now we're going to go ahead and crank the right engine, and we're going to wait for the RPM to get to 15. Once it's at 15, then we'll put the throttle forward, and it should tick over and start the engine. Once that stabilizes, then we can start the other side. Go ahead and close that so it's a little bit quieter. Alrighty, now it's a little bit quieter. Okay, so it's a stabilized off to 61% RPM, and you should be between 250 to 500 uh, temperature, and you should be between 600 to 900 FF, and 184, uh, roughly around 184 oil. Uh, I know there's a percentage between it. Let me pull it up. Um, preferences, engine start. So your oil wants to be between um, 35 and 90 psi. Your NO7 uh, percent needs to be between 77 to 83. So we just give it a, a tick up to. Uh, bring it back down. Hopefully it should fix itself up. There we go. 77 and 83 and it settles back down again. Okay. So we're done. So we turn the other battery on. Once that battery's on, turn the bleed air uh, around to norm and APU off. So that should turn the APU off automatically. Click the master caution. Controls. Flight controls. And then we can start the uh, DDIs on both sides. Just set them to auto, and you can set the brightness for the one down the bottom or whatnot. I like it on the blackness side, just so it looks nice. And turn your volume on. Okay. We have the uh, your ILS channels and all that sort of stuff there, which will be in a more advanced tutorial on that. 
f uh, you definitely want to do a lights test now. So turning the lights test on, listening for the alarm, making sure everything's on, and then go down here and turn your brightness up. Obviously, you want to make sure that's on. So leave that there like that. Okay. And then test off. You can change the HUD to whatever color you want. I have it on a light green, so around there and there. If you don't have that on, you're not going to be able to land properly using the uh, um, the uh, AOA angle of attack uh, icons there. And click the master caution. So from here, you can pretty much go through and set up a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but that's for a more advanced. So we're going to do flight uh, controls, and the flight controls will start coming up. We're going to bring the flaps up as well, and they are located there. So nose, uh, wheel left and right, so that's your wheels, and your flap control is down there, half and full. So we'll bring those up. All right, so I N S A T T, or yep. So that is uh, why I turned that off, so you can know what it looks like. It took me a while to figure that out. So I turned that to nav, and it is gone. So we are pretty much ready for a start and go uh, out to the runway. Uh, and yeah, so we're pretty much good to go. Um, from here, make sure you click the safe. Uh, definitely, actually, don't do that. Wait <laughs> until we're out from underneath. Alright, so release the park brake. Now this is a jet, so you want to be very uh, mindful on um, the speed of which you uh, taxi out. Um, otherwise it will take off on you. Alright, so the F-18 Superbug has a override to controls. Um, so the NWS that you see on the HUD just there um, is the nose wheel steering. To get that you need to press Control shift m to turn on the overrides uh, from the Superbug tack pack and then you press uh, Control uh, shift n to turn it off and then just press N to cycle through high and low. Now low is for taxiing on ground um, and higher is for taxiing on the uh, aircraft carriers. However, on the ground, it in FSX it doesn't really want to turn that much. It doesn't like turning very very well. So I'll, I'll give you a, a demonstration. So it's going to overshoot fair fair bit. So you want to be turning pretty pretty early to get the, that. So I just leave it on high. You can have it on the realistic setting where you have to have your wings folded to turn high, but I have it turned off because uh, Air Force, uh, RAF Base Tindall, uh, all the jets here in Australia, we don't land on carriers, so uh, nose wheel steering high is what most of us use. So. Oh uh, yeah, making sure that the uh, 48 uh, right there, it's a minimum speed uh, that the aircraft will show. Won't show you any below that. Make sure that doesn't go up and over. Okay. So we're just going to taxi nice and slow. Since we didn't ask for permission to take off, I'm just going to look at the uh, stock over there. And it looks like it's coming from that direction, so we need to go on the runway 32. So we'll take a left up here and we'll head out to the runway and take off. Okay, so now we're actually out and about, away from everything. We can arm our seat. So if something goes wrong with the aircraft, at least we can get out really quickly and, uh, yeah, hopefully survive a crash.
So yeah, just be mindful when you're taxiing out, give it a bit and then back off the throttle and then give it a bit more and back off the throttle again. On a straight and uh, a very straight taxiway you can turn the NWS to low. Um, we're not going to be doing much turning on the on the taxiways and it's a lot easier to taxi on a low uh, setting um, than a high because if you do too much or you're using pedals and you accidentally kick your foot forward or something the jet will spiral and uh, flip as well it's very easy to flip these jets um, so be mindful of that uh, so yeah the scenery I'm using is rough based Tyndall so you can pick that up off uh, Google uh, if you just type in rough based Tyndall um, you can pick it up off Simvation uh, flyaway simulations and a few other places I also have a um, Another one that I picked up off uh, off the internet freeware uh, for the bombing range that we'll be using uh, that is about 80, 80 uh, nautical miles away I think or so south uh, of or southwest of Rafa Sindel. That's where we'll be dropping our bombs um, and doing some tutorials out there. I'll probably start the tutorial out there instead of having to fly out there every day uh, for the videos. So. We'll do one where I fly out and fly back and land, but the rest will probably be done out there and I'll start the recording while we're flying. Um, but yeah, so this uh, tutorial first off is going to just be uh, the basics of uh, starting the aircraft and taking off. And then the next tutorial will be landing the aircraft, uh, which will be back to back. Um, I'll do both tutorials straight away. Um, there's a whole type of different landings. I will probably go into more advanced landings uh, in the future, um, like brake landing, um, hard landing, and uh, just your normal uh, coming in, uh, which will be the landing tutorial. So we'll do the normal, just normal land, and give them permission to land your landing, um, and also go around landing, which is very similar to brake landing. Um, Brake landing, you're flying over the, the runway at uh, 2,000, 2,500, making sure that your landing is down, the, uh, the tower confirms it, and then you go around, go around and come back and land. So we'll get into the more advanced stuff in the, in the future. All right, so we're going to stop here real quickly. Brakes on. And we're going to check out our checklist. I'll go into a more advanced features on these at a later date. Um, when we start doing our navigation. So we're going to check for our takeoff, so controls. We've done our controls, so what we're going to do really quickly, uh, we're going to go to the FCS, Flight Control Systems, and we're going to make our sure our um, aircraft is set up, ready to go. All right, so we're going to go there, make sure our flaps are down, we're going to make sure our spoiler goes up, make sure our flaps go up to half, and we've got full range of motion. Okay, so that's basically all we need to do there. We've done that. We've done our wings. We're going to make sure they're in the spread position. Otherwise, they can flip up while taking off under the stress. We need to make sure our flaps are down, which I have. We need to make sure our hook is up. Our harnesses are tied up. We're good to go. Our warning lights are all on. I forgot to do our landing light, but that's okay. Landing light and taxi can be turned on back there or out here. Um, nose wheel steering is going to be on low when we get on the runway. And a seat arm, but we do that while taxiing anyways. Um, so the, the trim, you want to press that button, hold it in for a couple of seconds, and you want to let it go. Down here, we should have advanced trim pop up shortly. If it doesn't, you just go and press it again. There it is, advanced trim. What that does is it just turns the uh, elevators onto a 15% uh, 15% uh, climb climb rate. Okay. Uh, for those that probably don't know, and we'll ask the question later, the uh, exhaust. Uh, is a feature through the um, tack pack. You can turn it on or off. It does take a lot of frames, uh, so be mindful of that. Okay, so I'll release the brake. I'm getting 60 frames at the moment, 
uh, when I turn that off, I get around 80. Alright, so we're just going to get onto the runway now. We've got, given, given permission to take off. Going to quickly turn the um, HUD on, and I'll turn the uh, ADI on. You don't need both of those, they're just two different ones that you can use, or you can use the one at the front. If either one of those three fail, then you've got the uh, one down the bottom there. Alrighty, so I'm going to turn the nose wheel steering to low, and we're just being given permission to take off, so we're going to afterburn straight off. You don't have to afterburn. Uh, it is advised to afterburn with a load, um, but we're un under load, so it doesn't really matter. And we just try and keep it on the center line as best we can. Aircraft will do everything else uh, once it gets to speed, about 230. And there we go, we take off nice and easily. The aircraft does the taking off, we just uh, do the gears, and then the flaps. Okay, and there we go. So that's all the using the trim. If you don't use the trim, you're going to have to do everything yourself. Okay. So we're going to go up and do a initial climb up to our initial thing. So the jet can do a fair uh, a fair distance takeoff. Okay. So we're just going to go up to our assigned attitude, which I am just going to pick out of my head. About ten thousand. We'll go up and fly above these clouds, and yeah, straight and level it off, and say goodbye uh, to you guys, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. So, uh, any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, if I missed anything and you want to uh, critique, please do. Uh, I will try and make these videos better in the future. Um, I will do more uh, um, Cold Dark Start tutorial parts of it when I'm doing the other tutorials, so um, I will be able to remedy what I missed. Alright, so what we're going to do is we just level off here, and so I'll just turn on the autopilot, so that will be in another tutorial at a later date. Alright, thank you very much guys, and I shall uh, endeavor to see you in the future. So yeah, welcome to the tutorials on the Superbug Hornet. I hope these are new and fresh and that you can find uh, some more information on the jet of your choice if, you, if this is what you like flying. So thank you very much and we'll see you later.